guys, so welcome to part two. So this time I'm gonna look at the remaining two syndicate cards and then we will go to full NR. Uh, you can expect next video after we get all of the cards from Monsters because Monster is the next uh, faction. So this one it will be a tiny bit longer because we will see six cards but then we will go faction by faction and after that I will uh, make a video about all of the cards and what's the implication because sometimes you want to see the implication between the factions and of course there will be also neutral cards that might work with uh, this uh, so uh, yes that's the plan but for today two remaining cards for Syndicate and another so let's go so we've seen already uh, which finder which I uh, just added like a quick uh, reminder from last video which I think it's all right card and might see even play outside of bounty and we've seen vigilantes that I think won't see play because in general bounty is gonna be uh, uh, but maybe and now we have hysteria <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to go like uh, with rarity so first we have hysteria place a bounty on an enemy unit damage it by c three if it already has a bounty double the damage <clears throat> This card is very good. I really think this card is very good. Uh, I actually thought it's 4 provision and it would be bonkers at 4 provision. 5 provision keeps it in, in check. Uh, basically, it's a dip in Pontar, but also puts a bounty on it. And that's better because this means that you can target something big. And if you look at the uh, how your deck looks like at the moment, like Pirate Cove or Line Pocket, they get a lot of uh, removal anyway, so you don't really care about this if you already has bounty double the damage. You don't really care about this uh, package, but placing a bounty and damage together combined is very, very, very powerful mechanic because it means that you are more likely to kill the target with bounty and being able to more likely kill the target with bounty is just amazing because it means that you will get the coins. Uh, <clears throat> I think it might see play even outside of bounty as a consideration instead of uh, like the, the card that generates profit or even instead of um, uh, deep in Pontar uh, you might see like one off of this card uh, the five provision instead of four provision makes it not auto include basically because uh, for five provision you already have good crimes like payday so is it better than payday sometimes but sometimes not because if you look at the payday it's five damage and ceiling of five damage is very important and sometimes you can use it as sort of place a bounty on i don't know two power unit or three power units and deal free to it and then you look great get coins you know something like this so it's different and sometimes you prefer to have payday and i think in more most situation you prefer to have payday over hysteria that's why I'm not sure if you're gonna see uh, it more than one off, probably no, in a light pocket, but in uh, bounty decks it's a must include, it's a must have in bounty card, because it makes you uh, be, basically if you play vigilantes and then you uh, need to kill something, you can basically deal 8 to it, and dealing 8 to the card that with bounty it's absolutely nuts because this is a lot of coins. So this is must have in bounty. Also, bounty. One of the problem that bounty wasn't popular was that it didn't have enough good options to put bounty on. Like Witcher hunters are very bad. They are far, far, four for four, very slow, do nothing. This is the better version of it. Also, it's synergized with uh, Witchfinder because Witchfinder is gonna put bounty on highest unit and sometimes it's very problematic when you put the bounty on the highest unit because you cannot really find the reach for it and this basically gives you this reach kind of because you deal 6 damage uh, to it and you give, give this option to put a bounty so in bounty decks it's a must have outside one of might see play I think so that's it and then Fabi I, I talk about this a little bit too much but it's just a very interesting card anyway Fabian Hale intimidate deploy place a bount, uh, bounty on an enemy unit if they are there already was an enemy unit with a bounty gain coins equal to its base power it's very complicated to, uh, it looks simple but it's very complicated when you think about it uh, because it basically means that you put a bounty on a new target 
you gain then coins from the uh, by the base power of the original one, right? It was confirmed on Twitter. It's working like this. So you, it's not like you don't put a bounty. You always put a bounty on a new target. So you have to remember about it. You always put a bounty on the new target, and then you get the points, the coins amount of base power of the previous target, which also synergizes well with Witchfinder. However, this card is very slow. And if you don't get the bount the all bounties, and you really you don't really like swapping bounties because even with this uh, with this uh, synergy of bounties, you still don't have that many good targets that give bounty. So you don't really want to swap bounties around, you know. Uh, you just want to bounty kill, bounty kill, bounty kill, basically. And this manipulates it, uh, it. And basically, it's very slow for a lot of provision. If you look at it, if you don't get any other bounty cards. It's a witch hunter. It's a witch hunter for eight provision. And witch hunter doesn't see play. It's four for four plays a bounty and it doesn't see play. And this is four for eight that plays a bounty in some situations. And because it's... And you know, syndicates now have so many good cards that you don't want to uh, play cards that can sometimes screw you. You basically, when you look at the, for example, Pirate Cove at the moment, they don't really have a card that will screw you. Like, even if you have one of poison, like Fistek, and you don't have second poison, it's still four coins. And you can sometimes even use it on, you can even use it on your own unit to get generate even more coins. Even in the worst situation, it's still four coins for four provision. This card is four for eight that sometimes can screw you. And also it requires uh, like crimes to be some powerful. However, in some situations, when you play against like, I don't know, Ikherm and the, this card automatically, automatically gives you uh, the bounty on Ikherm and then you change it and you basically make this uh, cheaper Ziggy, right? This is basically then cheaper Ziggy. Uh, plus you put a bounty on the new target, but sometimes you don't really care about putting on a new target. So it's cheaper Ziggy in some situations, but most of the situation he's just Witch Hunter, which is bad. So I don't think it will see play, however, outside of Bounty deck, however, in a full-on Bounty deck, maybe you want so many bounties, you will have to see how the deck works. Uh, it That's the problem of Syndicate, sometimes you just need to see the deck in action. And this is one of the cards that you need to see in action if you require more bounty. If you will require more bounty, then you will put in this card. But it's not as impressive as it looks. I think it's... Meh. Because it all only synergizes with bounty decks. So, I'm not a big fan of, that, of this card. Okay, and now we are going to NR, and if you don't know me, guys, NR is one of my favorite faction. I always played a lot of uh, NR, uh, maybe not as much as in Homecoming, but in uh, uh, Beta Gwent it was my literally my favorite faction. I always liked it, and, I, uh, and if you watch my stream, you also know that I love being greedy. And this time, in this uh, expansion, we are getting an ultimate greedy keyword so this is something for me i'm super excited about these cards all of them so let's go so first of all uh, let's introduce the patience patience uh, means that every turn you do not use the order the value in the bracket will go by one so basically for example uh, let's go and uh, the, look at this first card banner student Patience, order melee, one damage an enemy unit by zero. So if you don't use this uh, order, and for example, you don't have zeal, so you don't have to, you, you can't use this order, in next turn, it's gonna be one. Then in next turn, it's gonna be two. However, if you use it, it's gonna stop at it. What is very important, all the cards, cards that reset it, like Viraxas or a teaser from above, will reset it. The patience counter won't reset. The patience counter is permanent. So if you if it goes to two, let's 
Look at this as a veteran tag. You know, veteran tag cards, when they reset, if you reset them, they are already like base strength is bigger. So with patience, it's the same. Uh, the patience number is like strengthened. It's all like gonna be there. What it also means that if you, like for example, someone lock it and you reset it, it's gonna be at the number that you, someone locked it. But for example, if it goes to the graveyard, it will also keep its uh, number because it's permanent, like a veteran. So for example, if you use it at two and then it dies, and I don't know, you resurrect it from the graveyard, it will be, it will start with two because, uh, because it's like permanent. Okay. So that's how patience work. So let's now look at the barn art student patience order melee damage an enemy unit by zero. So first, when I first saw this card, it was impressive. When I first saw this card, I was like, this is garbage. After like three minutes of thinking and discussing on my chat, I, I thought this card is amazing. Uh, it switched like literally two minutes, three minutes. I've uh, from being garbage to being almost OP. Uh, why? Because it looks very bad, four, 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 and that's it. The thing is, you can with this card, it's a four provision card, four power from provision. It's quite bad, but uh, playable. You can kill everything. This card can be nine for, uh, for four, or it can be 10 for four. It can be 15 for four if you play it in round one and then resurrect it. This is broken, basically. Mm. This is a, a super powerful. And uh, again, it's a mage stack, so you also synergize with mages. And we know that NR is getting 21 changes from existing cards. 21 cards will see some changes, so we might see even more mage synergy. Anyway, uh, if if this, this this is a card that opponents have to answer. And uh, if you see an answer for a four provision card, you are very happy, especially in the greedy uh, faction like NR. You have so many engines and you will slam so many engines that you will be very happy if your opponent locks this. You will be very happy if they use four damage to kill it. You will be very happy if they use, I don't know, Karate Heatwave of it. And if they don't, or don't answer it, you can kill like, I don't know, Damien, you can kill Vi with this small four provision card. It's just amazing. I think this card uh, might be even too good the more I think about it. Mm. I'm a tiny bit scared, but I love the patience uh, uh, mm, keyword. I also saw some comments from pro players uh, of Bandit Gang that this card is not very good for the game from the competitive perspective. Because it basically means if you have an answer to this card, this card is garbage. If you don't have the answer to this card, it can be game-winning card. And this binary effect is not very welcome in the pro scene. Uh, but I personally am excited about it. Second card, casting constant contest. So this is a spell which synergizes. Basically, all of these cards synergize very well with my stock Mages deck. So I'm excited. Uh, this is a spell, and it boosts an ally unit by five. So five of four, five is already all, all right. It's like uh, Azur Thunder by, on reverse. If it's bronze, reset its order ability and give it zeal. So basically you can put it on Bannard student and it will continue f ticking. So with this, you can make it, I don't know, if you manage to get it to five, you kill something like Stefan and then you reset it and you can deal five again. Uh, when I first saw this card, we haven't seen any other card game, card uh, for, for, from the NR. So it was, I thought it's meh, but maybe we'll play one of in like an Alzur deck, maybe with like, uh, maybe with like trees, like maybe, maybe in commandos, maybe in like a, uh, my beautiful Karak City Guard Swarm, so you can uh, reset an order, which means that it will continue to tick and you can move move again and but i wasn't sold it was like two out of five cards but now if we with bannard student it might be actually free and i think you might see one off of this card in your decks but it's not broken it's like all right card it's like fine you might even like it's it's okay but nothing spectacular even if this order works 
However, you, you, even in the Devotion deck, I think you will see it. Because in Devotion deck, you can use it with uh, always as a backup plan with the um, this Kerak guy that boosts by 4 if it's Devotion. So basically, this makes this uh, 9 for uh, four and nine for 5 and 9 for 5 is pretty good. It like, it's like a reward for being Devotion, which is pretty good. My card is okay, and that's it, pretty much. Now, Istred. Oh boy, oh boy. This card, I think, will see nerf soon. <laughs> This card is bonkers. Uh, deal patience, so again, draw one card and shuffle back one card. So deal patience will one work on draw and uh, shuffle back. And whenever you draw a unit, buy by, uh, boost it by one. If it's not a unit, boost sell by one. So this is bonkers. This is absolute bonkers card. I think it, it will be nerfed, like really. The moment you play it, it's 7 for 7, 1 point carry over, uh, or, or if with 1 point carry over or with 1 uh, on this, so 7 for 7, and fix your hand, one card of this hand. But now if you imagine putting a snowdrop, griffin, witcher, uh, mentors, or whatever they are, this card could be bonkers. Like, go round 1, you play defender, you play this guy, and you wait. If they uh, they cannot answer a defender, you just win the game. That's it. Because then you in the end put snowdrop. You put snowdrop, and you click like draw eight of this, and you don't even care what you draw. For each card, snowdrop is gonna boost by two, so you get sixteen points. And all of the units that you draw, you shuffle back for carryover points. So not only you get bonkers amount of points in round one, you get bonkers amount of points as a carryover. Now, remember what I said about putting it to the graveyard? It's gonna reset. So then if you go for like plan of like uh, pincer maneuver where you create a lot of revenants and then shuffle them in your deck, you get like 20 points, uh, 20 cards in your deck even in round three. So then you can renew Istred, for example, and you have like draw 16 if you wait again, and you boost all of them, and then you, your Erland is 16.4. This is this card is crazy, and it works in for seven provision. Seven provision is so low that you can put it in any deck, and I think you will play it in any deck just because it can fix your hand. Uh, Witcher NR, yeah, sure. I drew uh, Vesemir and uh, I don't know. Yeah, ask uh, Eskel. So I put one back to the deck and I boost it by one. Yeah, I'm happy. Uh, it fixed my hand and it also boosts the Eskel for short round. You play it in Revenants. Oh wait, I draw too many Revenants. How about I shuffle them back with this and boost Erland by a amount of points? Uh, how about I play it in a, even a stockpile? Oh, it's a mage. It will trigger my other mage synergy, but also it can give me good card and I can get rid of a bad card. This card is bonkers. It's I f I need to test it because some of these cards might look good, but in the practice they are not good. But when I look at this card, I really can't find how this card is bad. It's 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 bonkers. I really I cannot uh, stress it enough. For me, this card is in the OP territory. Why this is not OP? Because uh, sometimes it can be awkward and it's very bad in round two, in round three. Uh, this is just bonkers. I really think this is just bonkers. Oh, one thing that I think about Bannard Student, you actually, I think, might see Offering play, because you play this uh, guy that returns from the graveyard every time you play Soldier, and you just put uh, uh, put Offering and just uh, you get this back, which is super good as well, because it will like not have lock or anything, and you can play basically four or five of them in one round. Uh, so I think Offering might be a meta card now. And by, coming back to Istred, Bonkers, really bonkers. And now, let's go to Gerhard of, of Ale. Oh my god, this card. This, my, this card might not be as OP as Istred, but this is one of my favorite cards ever. I've never been so excited by a card ever. So, Zeal Patience, create a, and play a 4 provision spell. So, there are a lot of in important things about this card. First of all, this is a mage, so it's synergized with mages, we need to remember about it. Second, it's 7 power, so it's kind of hard to remove. 
uh, then it has zeal, it has patience, and patience well on the provision of the spell. So basically, every turn you will get a better spell. Now, what is more important, it's spell, not special. It is spell, which means a lot. Also, another thing, it's create, which means that you will pick from up to three targets. You won't uh, get a random one, you will get create, so one in three. And another thing that is important from this, it can be from any faction, uh, because basically he's one of the oldest mage ever, so he knows everything. And this, this is amazing, because it rewards you from knowing uh, what spells you can expect, in what situations they are good. So at the, st at the start of the um, expansion it will be tough, but I think uh, later people will kind of know when to play it, because sometimes you will want, to, for example, to play it as early as possible to get like an invocation uh, later, but sometimes you will maybe want uh, a short round just to get the casting contest, for example. So maybe you just don't want to use it in one round, you want to use it next turn, for example. It is vulnerable to lock, and because you can, you have to be very hard to aim at the correct time for what spell you get, I don't think it will be meta card. However, I might be wrong in some greedy NR devotion, maybe you just put it for fun and for the uh, high roll potential and because it's a, another engine that your opponent, sort of engine, your opponent have to answer. But I'm gonna play it in every single NR deck because I love this design. I absolutely love this design. Uh, if you also, again, with Viraxas, if you use a 8 provision spell and you Viraxas, you can use eight provisions uh, spell again. And if you, let's go quickly to the deck builder and do, uh, let's see what spells there are. Uh, as you remember, for four provision, we actually have at the moment only two spells. And we got an information for Jameson Slama that Rune Ward is getting reworked and it's no longer for sure, for sure, according to his words, is not, not gonna uh, cost four provision. Which means that for four provision you will only always al always get packed. What it means that even if you have a short round and you just want to use this guy, he will be uh, 13 for 11. Just on play. And as a finisher card, round three card, 13 for 11 is very very powerful. Even if you just have to use it for packed, it's already pretty good. As you can see, the five provision slot is uh, a little bit more awkward because we are getting one more spell now that is uh, uh, five provision. So it's two, uh, you, you remember it's create. So if you create three cards and you have, from what we see now, we don't know, maybe there will be like Scoia'tael spell that we don't know it. But at the moment, it's three in five that you get what you want. So for example, if you are playing against Vi and you really need anti artifact compression, it's not guaranteed. So this is a little bit awkward. But if you go further, eight is also a little bit awkward. Uh, turn because you have one, two, three, four, five cards, so it's very awkward. But for example, for, for seven, you always get necromancy. You will always get necromancy. Uh, if you wait, if you are very patient and your opponent wants an answer, you can even go to on a romancy, but it's probably not gonna happen. Uh, one of the good cards is also a nine provision slot, uh, because nine provision slot is basically guaranteed all removal. It can be Triangle, it can be Curse of Corruption, it can be Yennefer Invocation. Marigold's Hayson in some situation might be even better. Uh, so you basically are never screwed with 9 provisions, so waiting 5 turns is actually pretty good. Because Triangle can also be used on the your target if you need it. Uh, Curse of Corruption and Yennefer as a toll removal, in some situation one is better than another. And Hmeli, uh, Hailstorm can be used when there is AoE. And these cards you probably won't see, play, see because it's uh, too late, but it's very flexible and rewards you for knowing what's in the deck builder, basically, which is pretty cool. I love it, and uh, I'm in love with this card. I really like this card. Mm, might not be a meta card, but I love the design. So pretty much that's it for today. I'm gonna see you in two days for monster cards. I hope you enjoy it. If you like it, please drop a subscribe and a like. And yeah, see you in today. I'm excited.